Suave. I've been in my bag for a while, I'm invincible. Story of a young boss, grinding shit critical. Calling on my bros one time, cause you special. I had some hood dreams and right rounds for my mentor. Every target that I shoot is on point like a pencil. Different routes change relationships, I'm so sorry. Came up from the trenches and I made it, I say hardly. Now Football is back, and Bet Online is your number one information source for all of your sports wagering info with all the up to the minute stats, news, scores, and matchup breakdowns. Get the latest game odds, spreads, and totals from the NFL and college football at your fingertips with Bet Online's real time updates on statistics, news, and odds. From week one all the way to the college football playoffs and Super Bowl, Bet Online gives you access to the best football promotions and contests available anywhere online. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-B, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, where the game starts. All righty, guys, we are back with another episode of the What's In Your Bag podcast presented by Bet Online. As always, I'm your host, Andrew Robinson, and we are joined by a special, special guest, man. But before we introduce our guests for today, you know we got to get the business out of the way, man. If you guys have been... Tune into the podcast, and y'all already know what's coming next. Go ahead and stop what you're doing right now. Click that subscribe button. If you're listening to this on YouTube, give us a thumbs up. Drop a comment. Give us some feedback. It goes a long way. Um, if you're hearing this on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, go ahead and subscribe to the show. Um, give us a five star rating, man. It goes a long, long way. Um, tell a friend and tell a friend about the good gospel over here at the What's in Your Bag podcast, man. We've had a bunch of great guests on the show, and obviously we have another exceptional guest today, man. I'm excited to get into his story, but you know what I'm saying? It, it's always great to be able to you know, share the love, share the wealth, man. So tell a friend, tell a friend. Um, it definitely goes a long way. That was my guy, Pull Up Tay, on the outro. One of the hottest up-and-coming artists out of the DMV. It's going to be him on the outro as well, man. So make sure y'all show him some love, man. Tap into his music. My guy's doing numbers, man. But now that we got the business out the way, man, you know, it's time to introduce our guest today. Uh, this is somebody who, man, I had the opportunity to play against uh, my rookie year in Portugal, uh, somebody who's had an extensive overseas career, highly decorated, um, just made a major, major career move to the ACB, playing for Manaresa out in, in in Spain, man, after, you know, like I said, a highly decorated career in Portugal that we're going to get into. But, man, we're honored to have my guy, Chavante Williams, on the podcast, man. Thanks for coming on today. Hey, man, I appreciate you having me. It's all love. I appreciate you, man. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt, man. And, uh, like I said, man, shoot, it's it's been it's been great to be able to to follow your journey, man. Just obviously from from Portugal, um, getting into Spain. So we're obviously gonna go get into all that into the podcast. Yeah. But before we get to that, man, I just want to check in, man. How's you know? I know you're you're, you're getting the season start now, man. But you know, how was the all season for you, man? What, what was that like? I know you were obviously playing with you know Portugal, um, in you know national team and everything. But you know, outside of that, man, how how was the the summer and all season for you? Man, it was great, man. I had a good time. I actually, uh, this was one of my first years that I stayed outside of the U.S. So I was in Portugal for most of the summer, uh, aside from traveling with the national team. So I got a chance to sit back, reflect, uh, put basketball to the side a little bit. We lost in the finals. So I got a chance to lick my wounds, man, and just sit around and uh, soak it all in and just appreciate where I was at. Kind of appreciate my whole journey and where, where I was at like in life. That's lovely. That's lovely. That's lovely. What would you say was the favorite thing you did this summer? If you had to pick, you know, one thing, whether it be uh, on the court or off the court. I had to say it, man. I, I went to, I went to, uh, I went to a festival. I went to Afro Nation Festival out in uh, Abu Fed or uh, Porti Mount, and uh, yeah, it was an amazing time, man. It was, it was a great sight to see. Good vibes, good energy. I went with some good people, so uh, that was one of my best. That was my highlight of my summer right there. Man, you know, it's crazy, bro. I saw some footage from that. And obviously, so I, I played in Abu Feta for the people who don't know, which is right there in the Algarve. So I always need to hear about the festival. And when I first came out there, it was like right after I had um I had arrived, man. But uh I always wanted to go. So I already know like who who, who was the headline? Who who was the football out there this year? I, I know I went and seen 50 Cent. They had everybody there. Davido was there. Yeah, man. They they had everybody and their mama there, man. And I I went, I seen 50 Cent performing. That was one of the top things for me, man, just being a childhood fan and just, like, seeing him in real person, really putting on and having Tony Ayo out there doing his thing. <laughs> so it was just – it was a good thing to see, man. It was good vibes, good energy, right on the beach. 
So you got to see the whole, you know what I mean? We're walking in sand while we watching this performance. So it was real dope. It was a good time, man. That's fire, man. Yo, for all the listeners, man, if y'all have not got out to the Algarve yet in Portugal, whether it's, you know, Fado, Portimao, uh, Abu Fera, obviously, man, go ahead and, and get out there, man. It's one of the most beautiful places that you'll ever see in the world, man. It's underrated. Everybody talks about, obviously, the popular cities around Europe, man, but the Algarve is super slept on when it comes to just the views, the beaches, and everything. Go see that. You got to go see that. You have to. Most death. Most death, man. So, um, also, man, I know, so I, this is what, as of recording this, this is, you know, the end of, of September. Usually right now, it's like a lot of OC teams are like just starting their season. But uh, for the folks who don't know, man, that preseason bump is crazy where it comes to conditioning, training, getting in shape, man. Uh, man. What would you say has been the craziest preseason experiences that, that you've had, like leading up to a, to a season overseas? So far, okay, let's check it out. Um, coming into this, pre- I mean, being in Portugal, I was always kind of knowing what was coming up. You right. know what I mean? Even one time I had a new coach coming in, but that was different. We was practicing two a days, two times a day, you know what I mean? But like full practices, not no one warm up. It was two full on bumps, you know what I mean? So that was pretty tough. But coming in this preseason, I, I thought I was in shape just because I was playing with the national team for a month. I thought I was ready to go, but we got out here and playing in Spain. I think that the, the craziest thing is just like running through two uniforms in one practice. And my my shoes, like I had some John Moran, shout out to John Moran, but I had some shoes and, and they went out. Like I literally ran them in, in 20 days, I ran them down and they, they was done. And like I had water, I had water coming out of my shoes because we were sweating so much and, the, and the, the, the weather was so good out here. Uh, yeah, that was probably my craziest stuff so far, man. It was, it was just a t- it was it wasn't it was mentally tough, man, getting through it. But uh, yeah, it paid off, man. I feel good now. That's lovely. Now, are you guys going? I know some teams will like move the team to like a different part of the the country to do preseason. Uh, did is that what you guys did? Or you guys did y'all? No, no, it was um a lot of guys. Some of the guys we had a couple guys on national teams, and uh, I came in. I think they was already working for like a week before I got in. So uh, when we came in, I came out from the national team, left Poland with the Portuguese national team, and then uh, we got straight to it. I think I flew in on Friday and practiced on Saturday, like, and we got straight to it. There was no hey hey, it, we got straight to it. It was it was it was real right from the get go. Now listen, man, I will say this, man. You saying going through two jerseys in practice, man, that is a a blessing because let me tell you something, bro. Out here in Japan, like, first of all. I love Japan, you know what I'm saying? But I don't want, this is one of the most confusing and perplexing things that I do not understand about the people out here in the, the, the situations. In the wintertime, they don't turn the heat on in the gym. They be having these like space heaters in the corner. And then in the summer, they don't turn the AC on. So they got just fans in the corners of the gym. Bro, when I tell you it is, and like Japan is probably one of the most humid places, bro. Like, bro, we be going through at least three or four shorts, three or four tops. At least you got to bring at least two or three pairs of socks every practice. Like it gets treacherous, yeah. bro. Like I'm talking about you in a full sweat, got to change your shirt after you do warm ups, bro. Like it's ridiculous. So, yeah. oh man, yeah, it's 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 brutal. That man. weather, that weather plays a factor into it, man. You get out there, you playing in that hot weather, man. It's a different, it's a different game. It's a different ball game. Then you got to think. You got to try to think while you're running. You don't even know that the heat's hitting you. You're you're moving different. It's a different ball game. Different, way different, man. So, man, listen, listen, for all the uh, all my overseas folks that's probably watching this, man, congrats to y'all for making it through preseason, man, and get to the start of the season because it be getting a little treacherous sometimes, man. But um, I definitely want to get into, you know, more of your story, um, your journey, man. Um, me being from the DMV, you know, being a Maryland guy, um, I find it so – I've never – you are literally the first person who I ever played against, like, from Alaska, bro. Like, I feel like when people from a DMV, from Maryland think about Alaska, it's like they thinking, you know, snow and, like – it's like the, the 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 mystery of the United States for us. So, outside of the basketball perspective, man, just talk to me about what it was like growing up in Alaska, living in Alaska as a kid. Is it really like what people think it is? I know you probably get this question all the time, but I feel like it's uh, – I don't know, man. I feel like it's so fascinating just to meet somebody who's been able to make it to this level – you know, that's from Alaska, man. Hey, you repping it on the shirt. You repping it on the shirt, man. You love it. Yeah, always, always. Nah, man, it's uh, it's a great, man. I love my city. I love where I'm from. 
And now, I mean, it's like crazy because you're growing up, you're thinking you want to be from California. You want to be from places where the colleges are at. We don't have no division one colleges there. We don't have no professional sports there. So you kind of like, you know, you attach yourself to these other places. Like a lot of Alaska, if you want to be a football fan, you're probably a fan of the, C the Seahawks or something. So being from Alaska, I didn't really understand it. Like you have this ability to kind of like choose what you want to be or choose what you want to do. But like growing up, it's it's funny because I when, once I traveled and I got to see different places, I was realizing that like Alaska was like all other cities, little smaller cities. You know what I mean? Everybody kind of knows everybody. Uh, growing up, there's there's all the vices and there's all the troubles that everybody else kind of deals with. It's just not on a the, the the big scale that everybody might experience in a California or a Texas or something like that. But you still get the small dose of it, depending on you know how you're moving in that city. So. Growing up, it was it was interesting because I hung out with nothing but basketball players. You know what I mean? Like all my friends were sports athletes. You know what I mean? But my brothers and my family they got ties to the streets and everything like that too. So when I'm growing up, I'm seeing you seeing both sides. I've seen a lot of guys that played basketball, played sports, transfer to the streets. You know what I mean? Or they they cousins was in the streets, so they was moving in the streets and doing all this type of stuff. So I was kind of blessed to have both sides of the fence. I got to see both sides and and be in that mix to where I understood what I wanted to do. And then I seen like, ah, you know I mean? I, I'd rather kick it with this sports stuff because I kind of don't want to be like everybody in Alaska. So it, it, it's crazy. It's like, uh, I look at the guys that I grew up under and everything. And it was like, they were just perfect examples for me of what not to do in certain situations. Like everybody kind of grows up fast there. You know what I mean? You're, you're doing what you want to do. 16, 17s, 15s type of a deal. So it's a, it's an interesting place. Everybody knows everybody. We, we, we secluded from the, from the world type of a deal. So we kind of focus on what we got over there and trying to be the best, the best we got to be, you know what I mean? So we, everybody from Alaska pretty much reps Alaska pretty tough. So the, the older hoopers I got, got the player around and everybody else like that, it was really, they're really playing. You know what I mean? We was going against grown men when we was younger and they wasn't taking no sides. They wasn't trying to baby you or anything like that. It was like real deal basketball. So I got exposed a lot when I was younger playing hoops and I wasn't the best guy. So I got to see, you know, what it took to, to, to actually be even good just in my hood. So that was like the best part of it. Damn. That's, that's fire, man. I feel like it's, it's, I mean, you, you just said it, right? Like Alaska has no, there's no NBA teams out there. There's no division one college basketball teams, man. So like talk about the, the basketball culture, right? Like, how did you get introduced to basketball when you were coming up, right, I feel like it's, it's people take it for granted being, like I said, from, for example, where I'm from, it's like you could be like, all right, you, know, you see Kevin Durant, you're seeing like, you know, Jeremy Grant or Mark Carroll Fultz, all these guys that, that are, have made the league. And you're like, all right, bet. Like, you know, it's, it's it kind of ingrained in you. Everybody hoops when, you know, around here, like in, in, in Maryland and in, in a bunch of these different cities. Like, so for you, talk about the basketball culture in Alaska, right? Like, how did you kind of get introduced to the game with you don't really have like that sports team or, you know, much of the, I guess that that culture to kind of look up to or that that was came before you to kind of inspire you or even even if it was right. Yeah. Like talk about some of those things that kind of got you into the game uh, of basketball. OK, OK, so uh, I had a, um, there was a there was a we had a good coach growing up. There was a, a, a boys and girls club coach, Rick Henderson. Shout out to Rick, man. He was a tough dude from New York. Uh, old school, man. And he used to just run the boys and girls club. And we had like all my friends. If you lived in like the Mountain View area, you was going to the Boys and Girls Club. You know what I mean? After school, before school, we was going to the Boys and Girls Club because nobody, we ain't, there's not too much to do. So if you wanted to like, you know what I mean? The parents would drop you off. The, the, the Boys and Girls Club would have you like, uh, we'd do lock-ins, we'd do, but we was, me and my little crew, we was always in the gym playing. You know what I mean? So that's where it really started. Like there was the, the team older than us, they was playing basketball and it was just like, well, these are the dudes older than you. These are your friends, older brothers, and they was the cool guys around. So, and, and early on, they played basketball. So everybody that was in that, that little realm right there, that little bubble was nice. Like we had D1 guys that was, you know what I mean, could really do it. But the problem with Alaska was we, there was a different mindset. We, you know, the mentality wasn't always there. So, and it's mainly because nobody really believed that they could really make it out of there. Because we had, our, a couple of NBA players we had was Carlos Boozer, Trajan Langdon, and, and, they were so far from us, like they 10 years older than us that we don't even really, you know what I mean? Can't really relate. Right. And then we had our Mario Chalmers, our star. And, you know, it's crazy that you be from Alaska and people on the internet will tell you that Mario Chalmers is a bum, but, you know, to some Alaskans, like that's, that's him. 
that's our guy. You know what I mean? Like he done won on every single level, high school championships, college championships, hey. NBA. Like, he really that guy. But compared to some other cats, they might not like give him his flowers like that. So we try to stay attached to, to you know, first of all, it's like you kind of be selfish. You're staying attached. Like, you, mean, you don't really attach yourself to the NBA. You don't attach yourself to all that stuff. You just, for me, it was like, I'm trying to play basketball so I can get a scholarship and get out of Alaska. Like that was my only goal. I wasn't even trying to, I had a friend go to play basketball or play football in California, my brother. And I'm like, well, I don't, I don't really want to stay in Alaska. I don't want to do this stuff like everybody else. So I'm going to just try to go to college and see what's going on. Right. That's kind of how it really started. And a lot of guys, there was a couple guys that uh, went to some good colleges, man. My boy Jalil, he went to Oregon. And my, my age group, my, my class has some good D1 players. And right now, it, you know, that from that progression, from the, from the things that we did, we got guys currently in the NBA, you know what I mean? We got Dacia Nix playing for the Timberwolves. He just signed with the Timberwolves. We got uh, my boy, my boy JT Thor playing for the Hornets, you know what I mean? And we got some, you know, we got some female, uh, Alyssa Peely, she just won Pac-12 or Pac-10 player of the year at Utah. So just from the work alone, it's been, you know what I mean? We've been seeing, you know, other Alaskans do something and more kids is trying to do the same thing. So it's been a, it's been a nice little, you know, up and down thing, but we was the ones to take it, to take the game on one. You know what I mean? So that's where we was really at with it. Straight up, man. It's crazy. You, you put me on game because I feel like, and I feel like I should have known that Mario Chalmers that Carlos Boos was from Alaska, but I feel like I didn't even know that off the top of my head, man. So I feel like it's, it's dope to be able to hear that. And even guys, like you said, Dacian Nix and JT Thor are guys that are playing at a high level now, man. So what do you think has to continue to happen in Alaska for the basketball culture to continue to grow, continue to move forward? Obviously, guys like yourself are continuing to move the game forward, you know, by continuing to level up your career and things like that. But I want to talk about maybe at the grassroots level, right? Like when you're, you know, how can kids in Alaska, I guess, uh, have more opportunities to get recruited, to, to be seen by schools um, and to kind of get the name out there, you know, so that people like myself or from all these different cities that are going think about Alaska and be able to associate guys like yourself or, or Mario Chalmers or with, with the game of basketball. What are you thinking kind of continue to grow the game, you know, in, 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 in Alaska? Right now we got some, um, we got some good programs mm -hmm. going on right now. I would say over the last five years, we've been, just the fact that, you know, there's been guys that's actually doing something and, and the kids feel like there's something, like they know me, you know what I mean? They go back home, they know me. They seen me doing my thing. They know where I was at. They, they seen the journey. They watched it. They followed it on Instagram. So to attach themselves to me has been something that like is motivational for a lot of kids. You know what I mean? They, they know they can go division two now, you know what I mean? And still go get some money. They know they can do some things. So, and I, I forgot to mention my guy, Brad Olson, uh, he's the reason that I like, he inspired my whole career. You know what I mean? Cause he used to play, we played at the same college. He played at the same college and then he, uh, went overseas and played in Spain. And then played in Spain a bunch of years and ended up playing for Barcelona for a bunch of years. You know what I mean? So, like, he he's really one of them guys that nobody really knows about. But it's like you got to show these kids something so they can attach themselves to it, to, 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 to feel like they can be something and inspire them. So I think right now the only way to really do it is for the guys that's, that's carrying the torch to keep on carrying it and show and then, you know, eventually get back. I try to do my best when it comes to – Reaching out when when I get a message or something like that, tell the young boys what to do, what to feel like, you know what I mean? How to how to take on the little overseas battles if they're going overseas or whatever it is. I'm trying to help because I already know like there wasn't really too many people that could tell me anything to do. They didn't, I didn't have too many, like I knew these guys later on in my career, but start or not, I didn't, I didn't talk to Mario. I ain't, I never talked to Boozer. I don't know Trajan. You know what I mean? I never really, I didn't talk to Brad until, you know, later on. We, we I ran him signed with the same agency coming out of college, but I didn't really get to speak to him until, you know, later on in the year. So it was like the early on years, I had to do a lot of stuff myself and do the groundwork myself. But now I see that me giving back and me talking to these people can can really put them in the game. And then, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't even know Dacia Nix knew who I was for a little bit because I didn't even really remember him before he started popping off. Right. And then he told me one time, like, yo, bro, I, you know what I mean? Like, salute type shit. So I'm like, okay, like, these cats really know me. You know what I mean? So it's it's just motivational all, all, all through, man. That's what the journey is about. 100%, man. 100%, man. Now, I kind of want to get into your journey, man, because I feel like you somebody who, like, the definition of, of getting out of the mud, man. Like, and I, I did some research on your, your college journey, man, and going JUCO, you know, going to two different Division twos, man, like, 
talk about your college journey, man. Because from my research, I I read that you I think averaged like eight at, at, at Adam State, and then your next year you went to uh, Alaska Fairbanks, averaged like eighteen, right? And it's like boom, you know, now you're able to kind of get yeah. your pro career start on things like that, man. But that JUCO grind is is, is a different type of grind. And then not having to transfer multiple times, yeah. right? Like. Talk about your college experience, man, and kind of just walking me through those years um, of just trying to get it. I'll tell you straight up. It's like I left high school. I left high school. I didn't have nothing, no offers, no nothing. I went on to an AAU tournament with uh, this team. And before I before I graduated high school and before I went on the AAU tournament, I had made a film of my little highlights of the season, senior year. I had got some film. I made the tape myself type of a deal. Um, then what did I do? I sent the CD out to, I, I found some, I just Googled it. I said, California junior college. I told you I had my man's, he was nice at football and he was going to play football in California for a junior college. So I said, let me just, you know what I mean? I'm getting out of here. I'm following bro. So I just looked up on Google, California junior colleges. And I, I even looked up prep schools. I probably sent the tape out to, I sent emails and tapes out to 50 schools or 50, you know what I mean? Prep schools, whatever. Cause you know, at this time, 2011, everybody's trying to go prep school, reclassify. So these were the, these were this was the move. So I'm like, yo, I'm trying to find anybody who's willing. And that was really the message that I sent. I probably still got the message saying like, hey, my name's Trevante Williams. I'm, I'm I'm a hard worker. I'm this kind of guy. I don't really have the grades like this, but you know, I'm I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to get better and do this type of stuff. Sent the sent the tape out on Google. Ended up getting one hit back from a team or some the the team that I ended up going to. And after that AAU trip, I ended up in California. And then it's just ironic enough, I'm in California, in LA. My auntie and my grandmother and my little cousin, they come into California because I got an auntie that I never met that's living in the Bay Area. They meet me in LA. We drive to the Bay Area. My mom calls while we in the Bay Area. They like, go check on that school that you, you know, where's that school that you, that they said, because they pushing me to go to college. They're like, what's up with that school that you hit up? I end up just like calling the coach or whatever, like, yo, what's up? I'm in, I'm in this city, this part of the city. He's like, well, that's, that's, so I even asked my auntie, she's like, well, that school is only 10 minutes away from my house. Turns out the school was 10 minutes away from my auntie's house that I never met. Called a coach. He like, yeah, pull up to the track right now. I pull up with my whole family. They like, I get on the track. We went talk around. He's like, yeah, come back in two weeks. We, we, we could play. And in California, you got to still pay for college. Cause there's no, there was no, um, there was no scholarships or anything so like, like that. So I had to get, I had to apply for financial aid, do this type of stuff. So I went back to Alaska and then packed my stuff. Two weeks later, I came back down and I hooped my, I hooped my first year in California. I was going crazy too. I was playing against some dudes. You know what I mean? It's crazy. I played against a, I don't know, you know, the, the, the rapper Pilo. Pilo used to play basketball and he was cold for real. Filipino Pilo, he used to play basketball and his team, they used to beat up on us and stuff. It was a couple of guys I played against too. But um, after that season right there, I wasn't taking care of my homework and my school studies and stuff like that. So I was behind in some classes and the money, you know, I had to pay for school. So I had to I, I ended up having to sit out that year based on my decisions. And you know what I mean? So but it's crazy because in that year, my family like, Yo, listen, we're not about to just be paying for you and funding you. You need to get a job. So I went and got a job at Jack in the Box for like two weeks. And once I was working at Jack in the Box, I really wanted a job at 24 Hour Fitness. So I was applying at different jobs. And then I got the job at, I was killing it at Jack in the Box. They love me. I was killing it. And then I got the uh, I got the call from 24 Hour Fitness. And I'm like, ah, Jack in the Box, I got to leave you. So I left Jack in the Box. I'm working at 24 Hour Fitness for like two weeks. While I'm there, I ended up, I'm, I kid you not, I'm working out. No, there's some people working out. This is my lunch break. I go out there and I hoop. Because the kids, was they was running the court. And I'm like, I, I ain't having that type of stuff. So I got out there on my lunch break and was serving them. Boom, in my clothes. Next thing you know, somebody was sitting down watching. And he ended up having a connection to one of the top junior colleges in the Bay Area, in, in California, all around. They're like one of the, the San Francisco City is one of the best colleges out there. So I ended up getting that look. He like, yo, you, you look kind of good. Come over here and try out in a month. I went a long month. Then I ended up going to the tryout and they they was liking me. They was like, okay, let's put you in school. We want you to uh come play with us, type stuff. So two weeks later, I'm playing, I'm playing with them. I'm I'm signing up for summer school, playing with these boys. And then 
we go like 31 and one that year. I'm on a team with seven division one players. There's only two D two players. Everybody went D one from that team besides me and another guy. I ended up getting a scholarship at the end of that summer. Um, after that year, going to Adam State. Tricky thing about Adam State was Adam State had uh, the head coaches from Alaska. And, and at the time, he knew my family. He knew my father. He knew my auntie and stuff. They went to school together. But that's not – I mean, that wasn't really why he recruited me. But come to find out, when I got to Adam State, it was like there was more Alaskans over there. You feel me? So there was like four or five Alaskans that I knew from growing up. So that was like a vibe. I met one of my best friends out there, some good people. We end up having a cool season out there. And then after the coach was leaving and I had to make a decision on what I wanted to do. So I was like, man, I'm trying to go back home and play in front of my family. And then when I got back to Alaska, it was like everything that I had learned and everything that they taught. Cause I, I learned a lot that year. You know what I mean? I just learned how to be a better basketball player, how to really work hard, what hard work really felt like, like really crying through an individual, like, you know what I mean? Sitting the bench, not playing. And I was already kind of cool with not being a, a star, but, you know, there was guys that were really better than me playing. So it was like, okay, this guy's really better than me. It makes sense. Right. And, um, yeah, man, just, just learn that way. And then when I got to Alaska, it was a wrap. I got back to Alaska. They, they, gave me, they gave me the keys, man. And I was out there in Fairbanks. And I was going wild. And I didn't even expect it. I was just going wild. I didn't even know I had all that. I was going wild. Met some good people. We had a great season. It was, uh, you know, there's a couple games that you missed that we almost missed. It was like a game off the tournament. We ended up losing to the number one. We ended up beating the number one team earlier in that year, number one team in the nation. Then we lost to them in the finals to, to go to the tournament. So it was a bunch of tops and turns from there. And then after that, I just kind of sat back and was enjoying the fact that I, you know, I had a great season. And then uh, some agents hit me up after that. I had two agents hit me up. And that Brad Olson guy, he went to the same college that I went to, and he wore the same number. So he was number 24. I wore number 24. And his agency that he signed with originally to go to to go to Spain when he was going, he's like 10 years, 15 years older than me. Mm -hmm. He ended up, they hit me up and it was like, you know, it was like perfect thing. Like, you know, I mean, I had two agents to decide from. I was like, you know, I'm gonna go with this guy. And crazy thing about that, they didn't even get me a job for the first year. So I graduated, had this crazy season, the best season of my life. I'm thinking double my stats. I doubled every statistic there was. And he didn't even, they didn't get, they couldn't get me a job. So I didn't get a job until January. Got the job in January because my brother that I met in Colorado that I played with, he was nice. He had a job to go to Bulgaria. I ended up telling him in, in August, like, yo, tell your agent about me or something. Cause I'm like, I'm not trying to be in the streets all, all you know what I mean? All summer and doing nothing. His agent said, yo, I'll put his name in or whatever. January, I got a message on Facebook. Like we got $300 for you come play in Georgia in the bottom A league. You know what I mean? We'll fly your ticket, give you two meals a day. Man, I must've cried, looked at that little email, little Facebook message, man, cried, said, hell yeah, I'm taking it. Didn't even think about it, man. I must've read it on a Thursday and left on Saturday type of a deal. Ain't played basketball. And like, I probably played like three games of basketball in that whole little four or five months type of a deal, man. I got out there and went stupid stupid just crazy went out there was averaging 35 just had a 50 point game 48s so I was man it was just it just happened just like that man I got off the couch and went out there balled out and then after my agency had seen that type of a deal seen me acting up they was able to like you know use that to leverage to give me a job and then I got to Portugal and you know what I mean Portugal went up from there that's how I, that's really that's the story right there in a nutshell Man, hope, so I bro, this is this is this is why I even hearing this for me. And I got I just gotta rewind it a little bit, man, because I feel like when you was telling me this story, bro, my mind was just like, bro, bro said he was working at Jack in the Box, bro, like paying for school, like working at twenty four hour fitness. Like I feel like a lot of people that reach the level that you're at now can't relate to that in a million years you know what i'm saying like that's, motiva that's, that's the motivation that's what keeps me going bro that's what lets me know that like yo i can't really do no wrong in my eyes i'm just trying to still learn and grow i'm still learning about basketball right now like i wasn't the chosen cat so to get everything i got right now i'm just been working i just been trying to do it you know what i mean and it ain't for me it's this this is exactly what it is i don't I, that's why and you know sometimes i'd be hard on myself because all the like you know all the things that i've done you know, all the like, you know, the hype that you can get from doing well, yeah. it's like it, it makes you almost forget that, like, bro, 
I wasn't really, you know what I mean? I've always played my role like this. You know what I mean? I just been out there hooping. Like I ain't really trying to put too much on it or anything like that. So I always got to remind myself to like, you know, stay humble about who you was and how, how it worked out for you and just kind of stick to those things, man. 100%. So what, what, what was going through your mind, man, at that time, man? Did you ever think about giving up basketball? Did you ever think about giving up Hella times, man. Like, how I was about to quit. Hella times. I got, there was messages from, I was sending my boys like, man, I'm done with this stuff. 18 years old, I'm done. After uh, after junior college, there's so many moments I could say that I said I was done. Like, you know what I mean? Just like, I'm not doing this no more. It don't look right. It's not feeling right. There was plenty of times I heard people tell me that like I wasn't going to be able to do this. You know what I mean? Just felt the doubt. He's like, you know, granted, I made mistakes as a, as a young dude. So I wasn't necessarily doing the, the proper things that everybody else was doing. And it just... It, that that whole thing, I doubted myself. So I know there was doubt coming from other people, you feel me? So I didn't think that necessarily all this was going to be possible. But I do remember asking for this type of stuff when I was real young, you know what I mean? Because I was envious of being the man and I wanted to be in a situation where I hit the big shots and I did all these type of things. So I, I put this in, I, I manifested this. I put this in the in my real heart. My real desires was to be, you know, a, a professional basketball player and do something well, travel the world and see things. And it just so happened that this is the way it happened. So for somebody who may be hearing this, man, and, and they stuck in that in that moment, right, where they think about giving up the game, man, shit just not – it's not clicking for them right now, right? Like, what were you telling yourself in those moments when you were thinking about quitting or giving up, man, that kept you going and kept you moving forward, man? Because I feel like, especially when it comes to overseas, man, like, you know, it can be tough, man. Like, my, my rookie year, I didn't play my whole rookie year because of COVID. I had a fucked up agent, so I had to – fire my agent, get a new one, man. I thought it was over. You know what I'm saying? I had to take a job in Costa Rica for like the same amount of money, like $400 a month, bro. You know what I'm saying? And you kind of got to stack days on top of that. But there's a lot of folks who kind of hit those, those roadblocks. And it's like, man, like this is even worth it. You know what I'm saying? So what were you telling yourself throughout those moments that kept you going forward? For me personally, and I, I'm just thinking about it right now. I'm like, so for the most part, it's like, yo, I set myself up to like, yo, what else are we going to do? You know what I mean? I put my back myself into a corner like, yo, bro, what else are you going to do? And then I started giving myself like, I'm looking at life in itself and I'm just like, bro, like, bro, this is still a blessing no matter if what you plan for. You know what I mean? The fact that somebody even wants to pay me some money to do something, you know what I mean? That I I was doing this for free. I was giving, I'm giving out buckets for free. I'm not tripping off this. This is You can get this at the YMCA. I haven't played outside in Miami barefooted. Dudes just looking at me like, yo, this kid is crazy. I'm not tripping. I like to compete. I like to play sports. I like basketball. You know what I mean? So it wasn't nothing really about that. So it's like the lifestyle that it provides and the things that you can do. And 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 it's like you set these expectations on yourself and the world might set them too. But you got to be the one to say like, you know what I mean? This is cool. You don't have to settle for less or settle for anything. You know what I mean? Shady. But you still got to be able to get, you know, you got to get yours for sure. But for me, it's like, man, I got to provide. I got to provide. I got family. I got people I care about, love. And there was that. That was really the major thing. Like, I got people I care about and I love. And they love to see me do this. This is inspiring for them. No matter if I'm getting $200 or what, they don't know what goes on while I'm overseas. But it's inspiring. You know what I mean? It makes them feel good to know that I'm doing something that I, and I, you know what I mean? There's a lot of the other things that I could have did and wouldn't have been this good. You feel me? So, it's like one of those blessings and, and you know what I mean? Like I know I'm blessing other people by continuing going on. So it ain't really about me. Once you take yourself out the picture and just think about the other people that you could be doing this for and who is motivating. I got a lot of people back home in Alaska that use me to be like, yo, I know this guy, you know what I mean? And I remember when he was doing X, X and Y, but they look at this guy now and I know him. He's one of my friends. If I message him right now, he might message me back. So it's like the respect and the love I get. It's like, man, even the days I wanted to quit, man, I asked people and then they, man, they just like, you know, it's like, I can't quit on them. I'm not going to be the one to do that. Right. I might quit on myself, but I'm not going to quit on the people, you know? So that's what really motivated me to keep it going. 100%, man. That's that's real spill right there, man. That's that's real spill, bro. Um, Now, I want to kind of get into your time in Portugal, man, because I feel like, um, like you said, that's kind of where, where, where shit changed and everything kind of started going up and up from there. So... You know, obviously before Sporting Man, you were with Liverance and, you know, you were able to win, you know, back-to-back -back chips there with Liverance, man. And I feel like for people who may not be familiar with Portugal or even the people who are familiar with the Portuguese league, right? When you think about Portugal now, you got Sporting, Porto, and Benfica, the three, you know, big-butter teams, other teams that are yeah. playing the, 
European competition. So it's like, even when I got to Portugal and it was like, yeah, man, you know, Oliver Ranch, man, they won the lead back to back years. I'm like, hmm, how the hell did they, how the hell did they pull that off? You know what I'm saying? Like, so talk about just how special those teams were. Obviously, when you were at Oliver Ranch Sporting, it wasn't a team yet. Um, but even to be able to do what you guys did with, you know, Porto and the Benfica's of the world, like talk about just how special those teams were, man, and just, you know, what that time they meant to you. Yeah, man, that was a crazy group. It's like you really didn't know how special it was until you left. You know what I mean? And then you went, you didn't experience the same thing anymore. And it was just like, I think the coach, I mean, I think you, you can call it luck, you can call it whatever it is, but we had a great coach at the time. You know, he's the coach of Benfica now, Norberto. Had an amazing coach. We ran, like, you had some guys, you got some Americans, and you had some guys that were just hungry. You know what I mean? To win that first year, it was like, and we didn't even win, like, you know, it was like, we was we we knew we was something. I remember my first day getting there, like, they uh they put me in before I even got to Portugal. I was on an airplane from uh, Newark to to Portugal, and I was there was a Portuguese group of kids that was out there already from the same city that I was going to, and they was already out there. They was in Newark, and they see me at the airport and like ran up on me like, "Oh, Travante, I got a little videos of it." And it's like, damn, they knew me, so I was already coming in with like, and I was a dog, man. I'm like, I, I didn't know nothing about no Euro League. When I came overseas my first year, I, I didn't even know that till like my fourth year. I didn't know nothing about the levels of, of, of I didn't, I don't, man, I'm like, yo, they're going to Portugal. I seen one picture of the sun. I said, oh, I'm out. I'm not worried about none of that stuff. Everything else going to have to work itself out. So getting part of there, getting into this group of guys. I mean, the first game we had, we played Benfica and it was a preseason game. And I remember showing up. I thought I was going to play, but I didn't play. But I just got to meet some guys and just got to brush shoulders with the guys and the group of guys that we had, man. We had the right vets. We had the right guys that were still hungry in their prime. You know what I mean? So, and then the coach, everybody kind of knew each other and it was a respect level that was going on in the locker room. That was, that was top. You know what I mean? So that was, that was part of it. And then you got a great leader. The coach was, uh, you know, he was, he was, he was real good. So it just taught us a bunch of things. And luckily there was, there was some, we, they, they made some trades that ended up, you know, and now you can say that it benefited us because we ended up winning back to back. So, there were some guys that became available and the, just the chemistry of everybody really, really meshed that year. And um, yeah, we just, we just did the things that we were supposed to do. And then when it came down to doing it again, it was like, everybody kind of agreed like, yo, we're going to do this again. And that's what really happened. And they came back, everybody came back and, you know, we was, we was, we was already familiar with the system. We already had everything down pat. We was trying to, we had goals that year. It almost makes you feel like the NBA teams back when they had, like the same teams coming back and you know the same mission same goals and it was like one of those things that you don't really find in european basketball european sports especially for smaller budget teams right. where everybody comes back and everybody gets you know what i mean gets a little piece of the pie and they doing well for each other so that's how we did that man it was it was it was it was love in the locker room it was love from leadership and, and we really put it together the guys wanted to play for each other we understood the system and that's kind of how winning, that's like winning was generated right there. That's love. Now, obviously, you went back to back chips there. And then, you know, Sporting becomes a new team. They come in the league, man. And you end up making the choice to leave Oliver Ranch and go for paper sporting. You know, what went into that decision to leave Oliver Ranch and go to sport? Was it just like a financial thing and they offered me more money? And I got it. Was, it, was, it, was real, it was kind of real easy. Everybody was chalking it up, everybody was leaving. You know what I mean? Uh, management from the other side wasn't really like, you know, reflecting the same res like respect level that I felt like should be respected at the time. And it's all love now, but like, it just wasn't the same. You know what I mean? Like they wasn't, they didn't talk to people until late. And you know what I mean? Talking to my agents, my agents like, yo, this is the best move to do. You know what I mean? Then you, then you add in the financials, you're like, oh, okay. There's no way, you know what I mean? I would even think about it. So it was like, okay, this is just double. They offered me double. All right, whatever. They not even coming, man. I'm out of here. And the right. new city, new opportunities, man. I wasn't. I didn't even really have to hesitate. It didn't even take me too much time. Yeah, yeah. So talk about man, them early days at sporting, man, because you're coming into a new situation, a new team. At this time, you don't really know what the, you know. Obviously, now looking at sporting, you know, the championship, super cup, all that's like, oh, all right, that's an easy move. European competition. That first year, yeah. we were sporting, man. Just talk about trying to figure out what the team was going to look like, getting adjusted to a new coach, a new system, a new city. You know, what were those first kind of tradition days like? And I was coming in like a baby. I didn't have no clue what to expect. I didn't know what what was coming. I, re I remember kind of like the first couple of days, 
I knew we had some some guys that played in the league already that we tied Tony. We talked about like I knew we had some high impact guys coming, high impact guys coming in, and I was like, damn, I gotta be on my game. Like, and I expected, you know what I mean, a lot of guys to. I didn't know which Trevante I needed to be at that time. You know what I mean? I didn't know which game to bring in. So first couple of weeks, we just letting it go through. And then I kind of like asserted myself to be in one of the guys that was going to be the guy type of a deal. And I think that's just kind of what stuck out for me. And then that was the train that I rode the whole time. Like I'm just going to be him. And I wasn't even thinking about anybody else's, you know, with the two championships on your back, everybody's kind of expecting you to do some things too. So I came in like, you know what I mean? Ready to go. And there was a couple situations there were throughout the season that, uh, you know, I had to think about or like I questioned my, my, my game and stuff like that. But I knew what the win, the ultimate goal was to win. And that was, that was all I was thinking about was just winning and, and how to be, how, how we can win, how to, how to take this show. Cause once you start winning, you start to be like, man, I love this feeling. I don't want it to stop. Yeah. And that turned out that year turned out to be the COVID year. And that was one of our most talented teams too. But uh, yeah, before that COVID thing hit, I don't, I didn't know where we could have went with that team. I think we was championship bound for sure. So, um, yeah, and it was it was that was a real good season. I got to meet some real good people, man. Got to be around some real good vibes, and it was we 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 took it to them that year. It was good. We didn't win the the only cup that they had. We didn't win, but uh, we ended up making it happen. The next season, we ended up doubling up on everything and just just taking it all like the next season. You know, what I mean, probably missed out like one cup or something like that, but. That, that whole year right there started that that level of dominance that we ran through for the next two three years. Yeah. Now you were you were in sporting for what four four years or five years? Four years. I think it was four years. Four years. Yeah. So obviously, like I said, man, you were you were able to win a bunch of championships there, but like I feel like it's 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 super rare, man. Like for people to stay at one spot for four consecutive seasons. So what what and even like I said, man, I, I was there the twenty twenty one. 2022 season, I believe, after y'all had won the chip. And I remember yeah. after that year, I think that was the year uh, who won the league that year? Did uh, Benfica win, I think? Who yeah, won? yeah, Benfica. They, Benfica won, they won, won back, back yeah. yeah. Yeah, Benfica won that year. So, and I remember I, after that year, I left, I was at came to Japan. I'm like, yeah, but Chimani about to get up out of here, man. There's no way. And then you re-signed again. So I'm like, damn, like, they got, he already did, he, in my mind, I'm like, Brody's already done everything. He already won a chip, won the cups. Yeah all the awards, right? So what kept you coming back to sporting year after year, man, when I felt, like, I mean, I assume a lot of people were probably telling you, all right, man, it's time to get it out of here. You can go different places. Like, what, what was keeping you um, coming back to, 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 to sporting throughout those years? Well, for the most part, it was contractual situations. But other than that, man, you kind of get to this space of, like, I think there was a fear in my head, like, not knowing if I can go play somewhere else. You hear the talks all the time, like, guys would be saying, oh, you only been in Portugal, you only been in Portugal. And then it was like, what can I, you know what I mean? At, at some point in time, it's like, I'm living a good life, a really good life. Yeah. I don't really have to, you know what I mean? I don't want for nothing. My people are taken care of. So at what point do you kind of stop asking, do you want more type of a deal? So I think I got complacent and I got com uh, comfortable, real, real comfortable. And um, I just was in a space where I was like, man, I don't know if, you know, everybody else is going to be able to deal with me like my people deal with me right now. You know what I mean? Like they loving me here. So why would I run away from the love? And if I'm running away from the love, like, is it, is it, am I tripping? And like, is this what you're supposed to do? And then I had bumped into a couple injuries that had me questioning a lot of different things too. And um, overall it was, it was the love for the game, love for playing with this team, love for the club. That's what kind of kept me going. That's what, that's what kept it going. It's just that my teammates, the guys that I was with the, the, the whole time and just like the city of Lisbon, just being in that atmosphere was something that I was like, man, got my apartment over here. I'm not trying to like unpack and take up stuff. You know what I mean? So for me, it was that. It was a combination of things. It was a combination of me not necessarily believing in myself. And it was a combination of me not necessarily knowing what the outcome could be. What You know what I mean? That what if was all in my head. Like I know what's to expect when I come to Portugal. Yeah. I already knew. But leaving with that, you know what I mean? Like, is it still going to be the same? How is it going to be? Are they going to, is it, you know, do I really, am I chasing? Because, you know, I, you hear the story like, what am I really chasing? Am I trying to be the best basketball player in the world? Like, not necessarily. I'm trying to be my best self. Right. You know what I mean? And whatever that comes with it, you know? So that's where I was looking at, man. I didn't know which part of the journey I was ready to take it to. Like, I didn't know where I was going, you know? And then there was just things that I just, I, I had to take care of the fam. I'm like, yo, I'm not cutting off my water source just to go search for something new. I already got sand to the beach. I'm good right here. You know what I mean? So 100%. that complacency kind of kept me there for a little bit. So, 
I mean, I guess it's a perfect segue into the next question then. What do you feel like made this the right time to make that next transition to man wrestling where you're at now in the ACB? Like, what kind of – because I know that was probably a tough decision, right? I mean, you I feel like six yeah. years in Portugal, man. You you missed the Portugal, man. You got a passport, which we'll get into in a little bit. But, I mean, what what made this the right time to go ahead and make that jump? I think it was just a combination of everything, man. I have been through a lot, man. It was, it was a, you know, it was a, I think it was a relationship. You, it was a part of the relationship where you don't really want it to break off and be, you know, too, too like, uh, like messy. You know what I mean? So you kind of wanted to be a smooth and it was just the timing. I was turning 30, you know, I had, I had good, I just, this is my first full year with my passport. Um, Things were looking up, you know. What I mean, I started to see, learn more. I, I learned more about the game, about the leagues, and like my value and where I could be, and what you know. And I kind of seen it's one thing that is, is a blessing playing with Sporting and, and playing in FIBA Euro Cup and being in that competition and Champions League qualifiers, to where I got to experience other countries and just see what it was like to be in big stages and like just how I reacted to being on big stages and how I liked that. Like playing with the national team showed me some different places. You know, I me mean? playing in Bulgaria against. Uh, Vez, Sasha Vezinkov, who's uh playing for the, the Kings now, and it's just like getting that that notch under your belt. You're like, man, like these guys is human. It's kind of like finding out the boogeyman ain't real. So it's like these guys that's making these millions and millions of dollars. Like I don't see them, you know, they're good players and great players. But I think if I work hard, I can be in that talk, or I could put myself closer to that vicinity. So for me, it was just like a whole bunch of timing. It was it was just naturally it felt right, man. Turning thirty. You know, trying, knowing, uh, learning my career, learning how long basketball can be around, and just, just really, just like you know, it is one, it was one of those things, man. Like, yo, it's it's probably that time, you know. what I mean, got with a new agency, and they pushed for it, and we pushed for it, and it was just like, it was one of those things that we was just like, and I think the club totally understood too. They they wanted me to grow, they wanted me to be something, you know, what I could be, and no, it's not, the league just probably wasn't, you know, they knew, everybody knew, you know what I mean? Like, they felt it. Like, it was just kind of time for me to pack my bags and get where it, you know what I mean? But right. that's how it was. It was it was a lovely, it was a tough experience, but it was like, you know, it was bittersweet. Yep, yep. Now, before we get to, to Man Racer, man, because uh, I'm going to do, you want to talk about, you know, what, that, what that's been like for you so far, man. I know that there's probably a bunch of Portuguese fans that's watching this right now, a bunch of sporting fans. So I just want to give you an opportunity to be able to talk to just, you know, what the team has meant to you, what the organization has, has meant to you, man, because I feel like, again, like, I feel like when people think of, you know, you, you were on that first team when Sporting became a, a basketball program in Portugal, man, you kind of ushered them into this era now where they're one of the top teams in the league, right? So a lot of times when people think of Sporting, they're going to think of you, you know what I'm saying? So I just want to give you an opportunity to talk about just what the club has meant to you, man. Um, Just, I guess, reflect on the years overall. Now that you're in a new spot, um and yeah. just being able to kind of have that moment to reflect on even Portugal as a whole man your, your last six years um you know playing yeah, I mean just, I'm totally grateful for the country man just everything that they they you just open arms man you get you run into whatever you run into but they're not even important or everything that was you know what I mean anything that was negative or anything about the situations the overall things like I got love from every team every club every city I went to you know what I mean there was somebody that wanted me to sign something somebody wanted to take a picture and, you know, that that's something that made me the person that I am today. It made me feel strong, made me feel confident in my basketball game. It's just the fact that people are traveling miles to come see me play basketball. You know what I mean? And it was like that thing is, is something you can never take away. I never take it away. And um, I never regret it. I think playing for Olivia Edens, that was so special because that that brought me to be the guy that I needed to be to play for sporting. You know what I mean? And then playing for sporting is kind of brought me to be the man that I need to be playing for right now. So it's like learning all these things and, and being there and um, kind of just experiencing the whole, the whole country going places, traveling, being known for being like Mr. Portugal, you know, Americans coming into town and they know who I am and just getting that respect from, from the country and all. It's something special, man. It's like, it's something dear to my heart. Love the country always will, you know I mean? That's my spot. So Olivier and sporting, those are my places, Lisbon, you know what I mean? Sporting is a, you know, that's where they let me spread my wings and really fly. They they put up with a lot of my bullshit, man. And you know, it was it was just a nice time, man. And they they really helped me grow. And even all the players that I got to meet and come across, man, I learned something from everybody, man. Even the guys that didn't like me, and guys I didn't like, man. I learned something from everybody, man. And it was one of those, it's one of those experiences that when you look back, it's like one of those moments like, damn, that was that was really good. You know what I mean? That was really good to me. No matter all the bullshit that I could have went through, 
anything that could have happened. I'm I'm I am 40 years old. I'd be looking back at like, man, that was a good time. Like I never take anything back. You know what I mean? Because it, it was it was a real blessing. And I'm just happy to be somebody that they look up to, somebody that little kids try to change their Instagram name to, you know what I mean, and be a part of. So anybody that was part of the story and that got that helped me grow and helped me help me get to this level is like, man, I salute all them people in Portugal, man. Those are my people for sure, for sure. 100%, 100%, man. So change the gears, man, now to the, the new chapter, man. Talk to us about, you know, what life has been like uh, in, in Spain, man, and man, Rissa with the with the, 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 the new threads, man. Just what's that transition phase been like for you in a new situation, new team, obviously higher level competition, man. Talk to us about, you know, what, what that's been like so far. It's been crazy, man. Like my first couple couple days out here, man, coach pulled me to the side and just told me like, yo, I know you're, you know, 30 years old. I know you've been out here for six years. You got you got experience, but you're a rookie. You know what I mean? Like you're a rookie. And all that stuff that you was doing before, I don't, I don't necessarily need you to do that right now. I need you to be the best you. And whatever you think that comes natural, this is the biggest lesson I ever learned, man. I swear. He said, everything that you do naturally. That's cool. But what if your natural stuff is not enough? There's going to be, you know what I mean? You got to think you got to be better in other areas. So like just learning and growing out here, man, one of a, a great coach, great people around me, great teammates. Everybody's kind of been around. You know what I mean? I'm one of the older guys. I'm probably like the third oldest guy on the team. So just to see like other people be in positions that I used to be in mentally and stuff like that, and just being able to be there to help these guys and, and find new ways to get back to my, to like, you know, just being more effective on the basketball court, doing different things, showing versatility, being a defender and doing things that I, you know, I truly enjoy. It's like, it's not like kind of being in Portugal where, you know, you're a target and you're the man and you got to, you know, you got to come carry the weight or something like that. It's more so like, you know, I'm part of a team that, you know, is a, is a machine and we all got to do our part and we got to be, we got to be a part of this and we all got to help each other. So it's been one of these things, man. Like it's such a learning. I, I swear to God, every every practice I go to, I learn something. And after practice, I'm like, damn, I didn't even think of it like that. I ain't even okay. This is why, you know what I mean? And I'm monitoring my ups and downs and my moods. You know what I mean? Like, okay, you feeling a little selfish right here? I'm I'm not getting the ball, but like this games, I'm not even shooting. You know what I mean? I might shoot two shots coming from where I'm shooting twenty shots. You know what I mean? So it's like but I'm cool with it because this is the player that that's, that's going to go get it. You know what I mean? And I'm not, I was never a guy that really like, that really cared about that. I'm really a winner, man. I just want to win type of a deal. Also, everybody wants to do good, but there's, when you find out there's many ways for you to do good, you know what I mean? I'm cool with, like I've scored points before. you not even games when I've scored points We Sometimes I lost. So it's like, I want to be a part of the, you know, be on both sides where we, if we, you know, winning is the ultimate goal. And if we, you know what I mean? If we win and I do good too, that's another plus. You know what I mean? And there's other ways to do good. You could be a defender. You could be talking to your teammates. You could be on the help side. You can get the game winning block. You could do a lot of different things, man. So learning here, man, is just, yo, you're being around players, high level players, high level players, man. First couple of games, I think I've seen who I see. I played against Barcelona in one of the preseason games. Jabari Parker was out there. You know what I mean? Got it. Everybody knew growing up type of a deal. We're watching through the college circuit and the NBA. And, um, well, we play Real Madrid tomorrow. You know what I mean? So it's like, there's guys out there that's like, man, like, these is, this is real deal. You know what I mean? Lace your boots up. And coach got on my ass hella times telling me, like, oh, this is not Portugal. This is welcome to the ACB type of a deal. Like, yeah. I had an ACB moment this morning, man. I'm We practicing. I'm thinking I got a nice layup, man. Six, seven dude come grab it off the back of the but I put it up there, too. Grabs it off the backboard. It's like oh okay you know so it's all this right here man I'm I'm in the gym more than I've ever been you know ever in my career I think I would consider myself in the gym in the lab cutter you know what I mean I made a lot of sacrifices and there's things that I'm trying to do the right way in order to keep, to improve to see myself you know I'm working on my feet I'm trying to do different things internal external rotation on my hips trying to just you know find ways to improve because these guys are really good bro and it's not I got a 20 year old on my team that's playing ACB, you know, he's 20 years old, he plays ACB and he does it well. You know what I mean? He's, he makes mistakes like everybody else, but he understands the system. He understands how, when to play, how to play. And it's just like, you know, there's a 22 year old we got and he's, he's tough. You know, there's a 24 year old that we got and he's everything. Like I look at this kid like, yo, he's everything. So it's like, man, there's so much to learn and grow. It's not just about putting the ball in the hole. 
It's defense, man. It's talking to your teammates. It's understanding reads. It's being able to read on the fly. Like, yo, not just playing with your eyes closed. It's being able to read because, you know, that shot might not be – it might go in, but that might not be the best shot for the for the flow of the offense. Right. You know what I mean? That could be the wrong read, and you just scored. So it's like understanding that the game got so many different, like, facets to it, man, and just like – that's all I've been learning, bro. I've been sitting back like a student, man. I ain't, I ain't been trying to do, do not too much. Just play my, put my ass off playing defense, man. Sitting down, they got me guarding the point guards now, so I'm chasing the point guards ninety, the whole court, man. I'm up and down with the point guards, and it's just, man, it's it's dope to be in this situation and have to kind of humble yourself when you stepping on the court with people that's making way more paper than you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah, yeah, they getting that, and he's really like that. Yes. Euro League, Euro, you know what I mean? Euro Cup. These boys are big boys and they're not playing with you. Jalil Okafor out here, you know what I mean? Guys that you I've seen on TV when I was growing up. I'm like, damn, I'm on the scratching my head, like, oh, I'm on the court with these boys. Like, all right, you know what I mean? So it's like it's just time to just, you know, it's a humbling experience, man. For real, for real. Yeah. Real humbling experience, man. Nah, that's 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 dope to hear, man. I feel like um I feel like a lot of people will probably want to know, right? When we're talking about just the basketball perspective on the court, right? What would you say is the biggest difference, adjustment? I mean, you like you mentioned, you've played Champions League qualifiers, PBR Cup, and while you were sporting. But what would you say is the biggest, I guess, adjustment, learning curve from size a basketball and perspective speed. to the ACB? Size, size and the speed, bro. Size and the speed and the tactics of, like, it's not even too many tactics. It's everything is, like, so efficient when it comes to, like, it's screen roll pass. It's a screen pass. You know what I mean? Shot. It's not screen pass, pass, pass. It's, it, everything is quicker. Everything is the guy. Everybody's bigger. You know what I mean? Like everybody. You know, it's 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 everything is quick. If you and you, it's, it's about a respect thing too. If they're on that court, you gotta respect them because, yo, they will fry you. You might not look like somebody that can fry you, but you can't be doing the eye test out here. You got You you will get cooked for sure, and it's happened. You know what I mean? Walking out there thinking that this guy's a slouch, no, he might be a slouch. Twenty seven minutes into the game, but when that when that when that ball go up in the beginning, yo man, they like that man. These guys is fast, and the, the, they got the the three man and four man. And everybody's big man. His foot is out there. Everybody's you know strong. So it's like it's one of those things. The size adjustment is one of the things. The speed and just the efficiency when it comes to like the movements everybody's making. It's right. not a lot of wasted movements. Nobody's making a lot of, it's not this. It's everything is, you know, it's sharper, it's quicker. And when you play against, when we played against Barcelona and stuff, it was just like, oh, these guys, they don't really miss a, you know what I mean? It's sharp. Everybody knows where the next pass is going to go. It's at a flow. It's like Spanish basketball. And it's, it's just super fast. Like you travel, you have to drop the ball, dude can run, grab the ball, run out of bounds and throw it up. Like it's one of them things, like the speed of the game is different. The speed of the game is different. Yeah. Transition. Boom. Now, going from being a guy who, like you mentioned, man, had the ball all the time, you know, the man in sporting. I mean, but you play both sides of the ball, two defensive players of the year and all that. Um, Spain is a lot more of a half-court game. It's slower. The pace is slower. I feel like sporting, you guys try to, you know, press and speed the pace up of the game. Um, for you personally, what do you say are some ways that you've had to adjust your personal game and try to fit into the system? Um in in Spain, as far as like, like I said, the, the 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 pace of the game, or just stylistically for you, uh, coming from a guy who was probably on the ball a lot, to now kind of having a transition that what has I guess been the most challenging part for you, or, or ways that you're trying to, I guess, just kind of fit in um, from basketball standpoint. Well, it's it's kind of like you got to find a way to get deeper in your bag. You got to find what's in your bag. You got to find a way to get deeper in your bag, like. I started finding out, like, yo, and if you don't touch up the things that's in your bag, you're not going to have that. Like, so it's like, it's it's about, it's about putting that work and finding other ways to, to be effective. And uh, for me, it's mainly going to be about like uh, catch and shoot threes, running, sprinting to the corner. My body's going to be on uh, everything, sprinting to the corner to get to the, to be available for the shot, cutting when you're supposed to cut, like playing more off ball and um, not just no wasted movements, man. That's really one of the, the things that a lot of players, that's the that's the thing that I used to do or I'm still doing now, but I'm trying to work on is like no wasted movements, man. Even with my dribbling, if I'm dribbling, I'm trying to go somewhere one or two, three dribbles or I got to pass it. I'm doing it. You know what I mean? I'm doing too much. That's and that's one of the things unless it's like five seconds on the shot clock or something like that. I'm doing too much. And I, it's like a clock in my head, the internal clock. It's like 
It's like, yo, B, 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 hey, it's time, you know what I mean? You're doing too much. Shoot the ball. It shouldn't have to be too much. Because by the time you catch the ball, you should be open. And if you're not open to shoot the ball, you should be passing the ball type of a deal. So that's kind of how the offense is set up. That's kind of how, you know, these coaches like to play. They're a lot more tactical, hands-on to where it's like, you know the next read you're supposed to. So, and right. that's just kind of where it works for me. So I just been having the, you know what I mean? I try to do everything with less of what I used to do. I don't get to take four or five dribbles and shoot a side step three and, you know, think that, you know, hope it goes in type of a deal. It's like, no, get your feet set, be ready to shoot the ball, if, you know, because if this guy reacts like this, the ball should be going. And like, on, and like, like Portugal, my Portuguese team too, uh, this team, we're pressing, we're, we're up. We want to run fast. We want to run high speed. So it's nothing I'm not uh, necessarily familiar with, but um, – it's a, it's a different pace, man. We want to get up the floor and you want to press. You want to, if you on many shots, you want to press these guys, man. You want to turn, you want to waste time off the clock and you want to, you know, disrupt the offense. And my coach says, it's like, it's like, a, you know, one of the two, the offense or the defense gets to attack first. If the offense gets to attack first, you know what I mean? The defense is like necessarily at its mercy. If the defense gets to attack first and they get to put you in a situation that you, they want you to be in, then, you know, it's going to be harder for, the 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 chemistry of the team to really to really work on offense. So right. That's my biggest thing, man. Trying to be more efficient in 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 little things. One or two dribbles, get it up. You know what I mean? Right. Not think about it so much. Sometimes it, it's crazy because a lot of these shots that you know they, that might come off or something, you would almost question like whether this was a good shot. Like, is this too quick or is it no, that's because it's the this the this is the gem of the day. It's it's like this. That shot that you might get after you ran off 14 seconds, 15 seconds might not be the that shot that you had at three seconds is probably going to be a better value shot than the one you're going to get at 17 just because you tried to run the offense. It's time and possession of when you're supposed to do it, and obviously, but there is like there is this like possession, the the value of a possession type of the deal. You know what I mean? There's a value in it, a value of the shot attempt that you're really going to get. Like if you get, if you're a shooter and you get a, a wide open shot at the, you know, at the right time, first two seconds of the offense, it's like, man, that, that was probably the shot you're supposed to take. Right. Cause now we ran you off two screens, you're tired and now you got a shot, but it's not the same quality of the last one you got. So knowing that and being on the same page as your teammates is one of the biggest things. High level stuff right there, man. High level stuff, man. We're definitely looking forward to kind of seeing how that goes. Um, Obviously. I love it. This shit, man. So definitely going to stay tuned to that, man. I want to, change gears a little bit um to your time with the national team, man, because I feel like getting the passport, bro, first of all, being somewhere for long enough to even get the passport is is, is a blessing, man. So talk about the pass the opportunity that, that that's afforded you, you know, having that Portuguese passport. Um and I guess kind of what went into I guess the motivation to 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 try to get that. Was that something that you always knew that you were trying to get? Or was it kind of like, well, shoot, I've been there for all these years. I may as well try to like, you know, get it. Like, was that something that you always planned to do? Like, you know, talk talking about that whole process. I think it was something I probably said when we was, um, you know, I grew up when, when I started coming into the league or whatever. We had there was a lot of older guys around me. You know what I mean? And um, they made they probably mentioned these type of things. I never really had it in my head. You know what I mean? I never really said this is what I'm going to do. I didn't really have a plan. I just kind of kept with the work, you know what I mean? I think the work is what really brought this whole thing about. The work and the success, that was the type of a thing that, you know what I mean? And then the, 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 the I played with enough Portuguese players that I believe they were able to vouch for my character, who I was as a person. So I think when the opportunity came and that it was presented to me, like, would you like to, you know what I mean? Would you possibly consider this was kind of like before COVID, you know? And they were like, you know, this is a potential. We're looking at you to be a potential player. And I'm like, okay, like, all right. And then there was years that went by and I'm thinking like, ah, this is not going to happen. Like I'm kind of doubting the whole system. And then eventually, man, it just came through and it was such a blessing just to be a part of that team man, be a part of the guys that I competed against and played with a lot of the guys I played with before. And just to try to be in that mix of like considered Portuguese, you know what I mean? Like the players really like they mess with me on that level and it's tough to be like, it's something special, man. Cause I, I like, I played against these guys, I competed in them. And now we've had some, We've been in a different country. We've been in four or five different countries together. And it's like, we really know each other now. And it's real vibes now. And it's like, we're really playing for a country and we're playing for something. And it's so special to be a part of that, man. I can't thank those guys enough at the Federation for just putting me, asking me to be a part of it. And I just like, I'm dedicated to it. And 
the players that we got around, the guys, the captain, Miguel from Porto, and Diogo, my old teammate, it's just like, man, being around those guys and being around even when we had Nima Shkata, um, and he he signed, he just signed to Boston, so we might have to see him in the summer. But playing around those guys, I, I realized, like, oh, that's a seven-footer. That's a real guy. That's You know what I mean? Playing with him for the little stint we had. And the younger players that I get to play with is just like, these guys are talented, it's special. And it's like, I feel like it's the same kind of thing I feel with Alaska. It's like, I had a part of this, you know what I mean? And it's dope to see them be who they need to be and like grow and to becoming better players. And even me going to ACB is a reflection of like the work that they've helped me get, you know what I mean? I've learned from them. So it's been special, man. It's it's, it's a real good time. It's a vibe, man. We, I done been to Turkey. I done been to Jordan, Poland. I done been to Bulgaria. You know what I mean? So I untouched some countries playing with this Portuguese national team and, Forever grateful for that one, man. That's been that's been one of my my, my big things for me. What would you say has been your favorite uh, moment, you know, from playing for the national team, man? Is there a game, uh, a matchup, or somebody you got to kind of uh, go up against in the international competition? What would you say has been your favorite moment uh, from from playing for the national team? So right now, I think my top moments. I mean, we just recently we played in Poland. We played against uh, we played against Poland, and we played against uh, Bosnia. Hair Bosnia, yeah, I think it's Bosnia. Yep. Bosnia Herzegovina. Yeah, yeah, we played against them boys, and you know Joseph Nurkic, and uh, there's got another guy uh, from Real Madrid that plays for them, um, Musa, Zagan Musa, or something like that, and uh, it was just dope playing against some real tough guys. Man, those guys were really good, and they were talking shit, calling me a bum. You know what I mean? Like, you know, really putting it out there, like, yo, where you play at, man? You know what I mean? You're a bum. And I'm like, all right, all right, whatever. I didn't know I was going to sign the man recipe in this thing. So I'm playing you tomorrow, buddy. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we're, I'm gonna we're see. See. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to see you again. I ain't that I ain't that bummy, but uh, I should have asked him where he playing. He just got traded to the Suns or whatever. So it's like, he in the league. I'm trying to tell somebody in the league. I'm like, yo, bro, you like that, but you not like that. Like, right. he's like you're a bum. So I'm like, yeah, we stayed in the same hotel and everything, but. That was a good bump, man. I like playing against those guys, man. Uh, I just like to play, compete against the high level guys. But the best one I think was that time in Bulgaria. We had a um, for a qualifier, pre qualifier thing. We had a, we knew the situation. We had to beat Bulgaria, or no, we had to. We couldn't lose by more than ten. And um, the first time we played them, they didn't have their uh, Euro League MVP player. Second time we played them in Bulgaria, packed house, all their fans, like crazy atmosphere. We're playing them. Um, we're doing well at first. They come back. They end up getting us down by like 15 or 16 points. We need to, we need to win by, by less than 10. or they, they need to beat us by less than 10 or less or something like that. And we just dug deep for the last like three minutes of the game, man. I hit some big shots. We made some big plays as a team. And we ended up losing by nine or something like that or eight, which allowed us to be qualified for something bigger in uh, I think this coming February. So, that was the real – just to see the excitement in everybody's eyes. Even though we lost the game, we already knew we had kind of won the battle type of a deal. So it was just good, man. The love, the hugs, man. That was something special. And even this uh, this past summer was dope. Playing, uh, I played against Rondé Hollis Jefferson. Mm -hmm. um, and we was playing against each other in Portugal. And then we went to Jordan and we competed against them as well. And uh, to be around that was dope. And um, just to kind of meet him and then watch him go to, to the to – the, uh, the qualifiers out there, and then I forgot where he was at. But, um, yeah, watch him go off and go kill everybody. I'm like, damn, I warmed him up. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it was just dope to be in that circle of players and just hear that, hear those names. So those have been the special moments for me right now. And it's just like there's so much more to come from that. Like you never know where this can go and what we can do for Portugal. We're moving up on the leaderboard of, you know, we're, we're teams that are – we're ranked like – I don't know what we're ranked. I think they said we was ranked like – 50 something or 40 something. Yeah. We playing against teams that are ranked 12. They beating us by, you know what I mean? We were in those games type of a deal. So it's like, it's like, it just shows you where we could be and where we could take it. So it's a, it's, it's dope to be a part of that situation. No, for sure. Now, does that for, I know that there can be some, obviously some benefits of having a passport, like being able to count as a European, does that contribute to like for your, for a man, for example, do you still count as a foreigner or do you count as like a, does that, does that kind of help you? Um, when it comes to getting, yeah, it helps. There's, a, there's a couple, there's a certain couple of countries that um consider uh Portugal or like passport guys, you know what I mean? With uh, as a I think it's like a Bosnian or something like that. Well, I'm not considered as an American, obviously, you know what right. I mean? So I think that does 
that plays a big way. And it could, there's a couple of countries that offer that type of thing. I think it's uh, Spain, uh, Italy, maybe, or France. I think France is one of them. So it's like you can only have a certain number of Americans, but you can have, you know, players from other countries as well. So it does do it does do me some some justice for sure. That's dope. That's dope, man. So we're going to get to some lighthearted questions, man, and get you out the door, man. But the last kind of question that I want to ask you kind of on a more serious note is – um. I feel like again, man, you you have one of the most craziest stories, bro, that I that I've heard, man. Just coming from JUCO Division Two, man, having to work at, at Jack in the Box, man, to to where you are now, man. National team player, multiple time champion, ACB Spain, like going up against all these NBA guys, man. Like, how do you reflect back on your journey, man? When you look at how far you've been able to come, man. We we we've walked through your whole whole journey now, man. From Alaska and, and childhood, man, and going to the Boys and Girls Club, just hooping, you know, how do you reflect on how far you've come, where you've been able to take it, man, and you know how far you still have to, to go, man, because I feel like this is my favorite part about having this podcast, man, is being able to hear these type of stories um, and yeah. be able to inspire somebody who may be listening to this, man, and let them know that you can you can get it you know, no matter where you're from. Being from Alaska, bro, is, it's, I mean, it's crazy, man. So for you... Being where you at now, how do you reflect and look back on your journey, man, and given all the things you've had to go through to be able to get here? Man, I'll tell you this, man. It's tough because you be so hard on yourself knowing that you got to stay in the moment and stay consistent with what you're doing now. It's like nobody really cares about, like, you know what I mean? It makes good for a good story, but, like, when I go out and play and compete tomorrow, them dudes ain't going to spare me no no less if I, you know what I mean, if I was from here or from here. But um, it's tough when you're living in the moment you know, but I think like part of being in the moment and like going through tough times and going through ups and downs while you're playing could be a missed shot, a missed foul. I try to always remind myself of the shit that I've been through. Shit, I try to tell, I try to replay the story while I'm playing in order to get like, you know, a lighter feeling. Like sometimes I go to the free throw line and I laugh because after I miss a free throw or something like that, I just start laughing because it's like, bro, I'm not even supposed to be here, man. Like, what am I even tripping about, you know? I've already worked. I, I, the work has already been done necessarily. So it's like, just go out there and live, live, live kind of free, man. Be out there and be, you know, shoot the ball, do what you know to do, you know, have confidence in yourself because there was times when you didn't have this much confidence in yourself. So trust the work that you put in. And um, that's the kind of reflection part that I get of the journey. Now, when I try to reflect, I try to just think about everything that I've been through to get me through the next day. Like, bro, you, you was living like this before, bro. You here now, bro. Appreciate it. So I think this happens to a lot of guys, man, when they're moving on and they're doing things that's bigger than what they did. It's just like you forget to do this type of stuff until you start to talk about it. And then, you know what I mean? Like after this conversation, I'll be I'll be on a buzz for like 40 minutes thinking about it. Then I start thinking about the next game and what I need to do or what more can we get? So it's like it's having this mindset. It's trying to have find this happy balance of like, all right, you know, there's still more to go get for sure. We, we understand that. But still, let's appreciate what you've been through and let's appreciate what you've done because, you know, this ain't everything. You know, there's all darker, deeper, darker stories of everything. So it's like, man, really appreciate, you know, this journey, this process. And, and, and but don't appreciate too much when you just stay in it and you think that's going to give you everything that you need. Like, just because you got that don't mean you, you still got to come to show up to work. So it's, it's, a, it's a happy balance that you try to find, man. You try to find this nice balance of like, yo. I appreciate everything I've been through, but I'm going to get more because I still, you know what I mean? I still got it. It ain't nothing. I ain't lose nothing. There's just, there's another. Now, what the story going to look like if I did this and turned it up one more notch? Like, how it's really going to look? You know what I mean? It's going to sound crazy. And that's what we're looking for. We want the story to sound crazy. We want people's eyes to be like, damn, I can't even believe it. You know what I mean? So that's what that's what it's for. It's all facts, man. You know, this is this is how it went. This ain't even, you know what I mean? We scratching the surface. Wait till my career over. I get to talk about how it really went down, man. Like, yeah, it's it's this is man, this is this is it's something special. And I gotta remind myself that. Thank you for remind helping me remind myself. Cause like, bro, I wasn't even supposed to be in, you know what I mean? I wasn't one of them guys that was going to big AAU tournaments or anything like that, man. I wasn't trying to do all that stuff. I went to I probably played on like two or three AAU teams. And if I did, we was in the lowest bracket, the silver bronze bracket. We wasn't. I was in Vegas on the other court. I was not on the court where everybody else was at. So it's cool to be in this position now, run through play, you know what I mean? See players come through and, and get to get to get to get to get to just like I'm getting sparring matches. I get to see what's up. Show me. I'm just that's my whole thing. Like, man, just show me. I'm trying to, I'm trying to 
I'm just a student right now, man. I ain't nothing. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to learn and grow still. Yeah. Yeah. So I got to ask, um, just one more, uh, on this, on the same topic, man. What, what's, I feel like listening to your, to your response, man, made me think, man, like you said, man, like the story was going to get even crazier. You know what I'm saying? So like, what, what's next, you know, for, for, for Javante Williams, man, what do you want, you know, if you were to look back, you know, 10 years from now, you could say, man, I want, you know, if, I'm, if I was to retire, man, I would have, you know, accomplished this, man. Like, what do you want that story to look like from here? You know, what, what? I want to just take everything I, everything I did on Portugal level. I want to take it to the European level. I want to win at the highest levels. I want to be on winning teams that win. You know what I mean? I want to carry more trophies. I don't want to just stop there. I want to take it to that level to where it's like, I was one of the players that was like, Oh wow, that would be, you know, this guy plays for this team or this guy's done this. He won this with this team. And you know, what I mean, now he's and then obviously it's like to with coming winning on those high level teams, like there is obviously a financial thing with it behind that. So it's like I want to be set after this basketball stuff. Like, you know, I can go take care of fans and keep everybody nice and go get myself something nice and buy myself, you know, I mean be set to to put put my money for investments and just have things. You know, I want my career to feel like it was fulfilled in that aspect as well. So I want to win more and gain more money, man. That's the whole goal right now. Straight Make up. more experience, win more, gain more money. That's what it is, man. 100 percent, man. 100 percent, man. So I got a few more questions for you, man. We're gonna have a little bit of fun though, man. I feel like uh Get it. I put you on the spot right here, man. You know what I'm saying? The first question I got for you, man. You can't cop out, man. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta give me an answer for this one, man. What is what was the best sporting team that you played on if you had to pick one team? It was the year we won a championship. It was uh it was uh me, John Field, Shakir Smith, uh Micah Downs, you can know, without Jalen in there. It was uh it was uh yeah, it was that team that was uh that was the year after COVID. That was the best team we had. I'm surprised you answered that quick. I thought you was going, I thought you gotta think about it. <laughs> nah, 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 I knew even though this last uh, yeah, that was the best team for sure. That was the best team. Okay, 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 bet, bet. Now I gotta ask you this, man, because I find this is a legendary moment, man. That you know, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get your perspective on, man. What was, what was the motivation behind you running across the the soccer field at that game when you was about to get up out of? Would you, would you thinking you was leaving like? Because when I see that, I'm like, oh yeah, bro, out of here for sure. Like, <laughs> and I honestly thought it was the game. The game was over, and that we were, um, like, it was my club. So you know what I mean? I was trying to like, you know go celebrate with the team on some like very peaceful stuff. Like I didn't want to cause no trouble. It was messed up because it got distorted. Like people thought like, it's it's very, it's, one thing about it is it's really, it was a really serious thing because like they're protecting the athletes, the security and everybody has to protect the athletes and the athletes need to be protected for sure. And um, it's, it's interesting because that was like, never even crossed my mind to even think I was Super apologetic after because I, I feel still feel like a dumbass about it because dog, I didn't even think about like the protection of other people. And it was so like some kiddish stuff to do because, but ultimately it was on some like, you know, I wanted to go out there and celebrate with the team. They just won. It was dope. We won cups. We're, you know, we're this club. We're, but honestly, it was just it, it was a very, 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 very big mistake. <laughs> was not, was not what I really intended to do, but. Honestly, I'm super apologetic about the situation because I didn't want to, because because with the you know the what it looked like to the optics, you know what I mean? Like nobody wants to harm anybody, and I didn't want anybody to feel endangered or anything like that. I was never the cause or never the you know what I mean the the intentions, but ultimately I take the full responsibility for my actions. And um, yeah, that was a very very epic moment in history. Very very <laughs> epic, epic moment in history. For sure. <laughs> This is a question from my guy Ty Tony, man. He wanted me to ask you about them, uh, them, them, them freestyle cipher nights back in sporting man with you, him, Malika, Boo, and the crew, man. Talk, yeah. talk about talk about the, the them days. Now I got bars. One thing about it is we used to get together, especially during the running. It was like COVID time, and they was like, we was all had to be stuck in the house. We was like, we would get together and start rapping. We bro, we was always listening to music together, eating good food, man. So. It was like, yo, we had a rap battle, and you know, I think it was on a bus too. We, I was really writing lyrics. I probably still got my lyrics, man. Like, I got some flows that I was shooting at Ty Tony, man. It was a battle because we, you know, we watched that Smack Smack URL. Shout out to Smack, shout out to Smack in there, man. We we watch a lot of rap battles, so 
yeah, we used to we used to get down with this get down, man. You know, I had to do I, I did what I did, man. I make I make music, I make hits. Okay, okay, okay. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it, man. Um, one thing I was always envious of because we we had a good a good spot in Abu Fera, but I always was envious of y'all and Ben Figure because y'all was in Lisbon, bro. And I thought Lisbon is a super dope city, bro. And I feel like yeah. people talk about European cities. Everybody talks about you know Paris, London. You know, Madrid, deservingly so, Istanbul, but like I feel like Lisbon is super slept on. So talk about just what it was like playing in Lisbon for all them years, bro. Cause I feel like Lisbon yeah. is an amazing European city. Lisbon was home, man. I honestly just I didn't really get to appreciate Lisbon until I moved. You know what I mean? Until I start to see other places. I'm like, oh, well, Lisbon's the perfect size. Cause you know, you, sometimes you get overwhelmed with these bigger cities. It's like, oh, there's all this, there's all that. Where Lisbon's so condensed. You got everything right where you need to have it. You know what I mean? So when you're in the city, you feel good. You can walk these places. I don't walk, I don't walk Lisbon for sure. You know what I mean? It's not like these other places you see, I see Barcelona. I'm like, ah, it doesn't seem like I want to walk this place, you know. Lisbon's a nice man. It's one of the safest places, man. It was it was real dope just to be able to. I that's my baby. I can't even uh, that's my baby. That is my baby for sure. For sure. Any favorite spots, recommendations for folks that might be traveling to Lisbon, man, place they got to hit, whether it's nightlife, restaurants, man, what's some of the best spots to hit up? Ah, oh, man, I was very, there's the, ah, oh, man, I would go across the bridge outside of Lisbon a little bit to the other side to Costa Caparica. I would check out, um, I would check out, uh, what's who I want to give a shot. I would check out on Friday nights. I would check out, uh, 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 Oka on Friday nights. Uh, Guillermo Rendezvous, man, one of the best little hip hop parties that goes down on Friday night. Shout out to Lau. Yeah, that's one of the best spots to be at on Friday nights if you need a hip hop scene. I would also try, man, to get out there and just walk it out, man. I, a hard rock cafe, that's where that, that took a lot of money from me. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I was going for the hot wings, man. So, hard rock cafe was one of my spots. And, um, oh, shout out to restaurant Gina. A Gina, real restaurant at Gina is pretty tough. That's one of my spots. And I hope I'm not missing anybody. Uh, Joker the Barber, you know, that's my guy, locked in forever. Um, Bulger, there's this place called Bulger. It's on Uber Eats. That place really got me for a lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? That place, I was ordering that thing a lot. So, uh, yeah, man, um, Lisbon is love. That's what I tell everybody. Lisbon is love, man. You just got to be open to embrace it, man. Oh, if you want looking for a rooftop bar, go to uh, Go A Lisboa, or you can go to you can go to uh, what else is there? Yeah, there's a lot of places, man. But Lisbon is love, man, for sure. Rex. Hey, listen, man. I'm, for selfish reasons, I'm gonna have to spin this episode back. If I ever get back out there, man, get my notepad up in these spots for sure, man. Yeah, I know, no, Don't even worry. I got a whole list of recommendations. I'm just saying, I can send it to you, man. I got a I got a PFD. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I'm tripping. I said a PFD. That's the that's the permanent fund dividend. I wish I I think I might get my PFD. I got to check on that. But uh, nah. I got the PDF man with all the Lisbon restaurants. Man, it's lit. Say less. Um, what is one thing if you could tell, you know, twelve year old Chavante back in Alaska one thing? What would it be? Stop fucking crying, man. Stop crying. You know, and be be just. Just, just, just love, love more. All that stuff you felt inside, all that little anger, yeah, it, it got you to where you are. But like, be accountable for your actions. Love more, man, and, and just keep bringing. Just don't, don't shy away from the moment. Be that star. Own yourself. Own, own everything you got. Uh, uh, be, be there. Do your push-ups, man. Do your push-ups. And now I gotta get my body right. You know what I mean? Because I didn't do my push-ups when I was younger. Do your push-ups, man. Do your sit-ups, man. Break a sweat. Motivate. Inspire connect, build, man, give it all you got, man, and, and just keep loving and doing the things that you're doing. You're going to be great one day, kid. Just keep going. Just go, just keep going, kid. Stop crying, though, and do your push-ups. Stop crying. All that crying ain't necessary. You know what I mean? Don't be stay, – stay in your lane. Don't be worried about what everybody else is doing. You're special. You got it. Don't don't worry about everybody else. Everything you – your your plate, eat your food on your plate. And you know what I mean? If you want more, go get it. You feel me? But eat what you got right now, and that and everything else is gonna take care of itself. That's gonna be the hardest thing I said right there. Ooh, that's a bar. <laughs> you got right now. You worried? You looking at this? Oh, he got that. Nah. Focus on this plate right here. Eat all the vegetables. Eat everything on this plate, man. And then if you want more, man, there's more food. There's more food. 
What do you say in London, man? It's more food, fam. There's more food, fam. <laughs> 100%. 100%, man. That's a banger, bro. That's a banger, man. All right, so last thing we're going to do, man, I got to uh, – we we like to do our uh, drafts, right? So we're going to drive a starter five, right? So I want you to be able to put on – put on for Alaska right now. So we're going to draft Alaska starter five if it comes to basketball by position, right? All-time starter five, right? And I'm going to do – my all-time uh, DMV starter five now. So we're going to do point guard, shooting guard. Hey, listen, I'm going to be real with you, homie. Ain't nobody beating my dogs. Like, we – I, I got some – what, what year are we talking about? Are we talking all about, time. like – All-time. All-time starter five. When they're at their best. Yes, peak. Peak. At their peak. You know oh what I'm saying? Oh, my God. So you, that you, is you get the tough. first pick at the point guard. Who, who Who's your point guard? Well, I got my point guards. My my guys is one and two. You know what I mean? They one. They can play the one and the two. Okay. okay. I'm start. I'm starting it off with uh. Damn, that's tough. I'm starting Mario Chalmers at the one. Okay. Okay. Good. That's that's solid. That's solid. That's solid. All right. So the DMV squad. DMV squad. I know. I'm a, I know. I'm gonna watch this later, and I'll be like, damn, I can't believe I forgot this person. But you know what I'm saying? I'm. I'm a, I'm a, it's, it's at the top of my head right now. So I'm going to just go, uh, Markel Fultz at the one, number one overall draft pick. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to, I'm going to put him at the point guard. I'm going to put him at the point guard. Damn. Actually, no, 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 no. I got to, I got to change. I got to change. Scratch that. Scratch that. My bad. I love Markel. I love Markel, but I'm going, I'm going, uh, I'm going, I'm going Grant Hill at the one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's more of a wing, but I'm going a big guard. Big guard, the one. Hall of Famer. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going my two. I got to go Trajan Langdon at the two. Okay. Uh, I'll go Trajan Langdon at the two. Straight knockdown shooter. You're not going to stop that. Bang, bang, bang. Mario's coming off. Big screens because we got my – I got to figure out my fours in there. Hold up. Yeah, keep going. <laughs> okay. Best. Oh, so, yeah, I got my five already. Ah, yeah, I got right. my five. All right, we're going to see. We're going to see. My, my two – my two shooting guard, bro. I can't believe I'm blinking right now. I'm blinking right now, but I feel like my shooting guard. People are gonna be so mad when they see this. <laughs> my shooting guard at the two. I'm going. I mean, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta rock with my guy, man. I'm going Steve Francis, man. I really should have probably put him at the one for him, put Grant. <laughs> Oh, yeah, what kind of team y'all got in the DMV? Yeah, yeah, Steve Francis. Shout out to Coma Park, Maryland, man. You know what I'm saying? DC Wolves. So I'm gonna have to flop him. I'm gonna go Steve at the one and Grant here at the two. All right, I got Mario, I got Trajan. Ah, man, we got seven players on my team, so somebody gonna come up to my, my scores is coming off the bench. I'm starting myself at the three. You know what I mean? Three. Just got we need some defense on the perimeter, we need to play some defense, but this is just my one lineup. I really got, a, I got nine, I got nine. All okay. right. Okay. So you got Mario trains it, trains Langley and yourself, right? All right. So I got Steve. Yeah. The one, two, three. My three, you already know how I'm going with the three. Easy money sniper. KD oh, at the three. Oh, that's, oh, that's, that's good. Yeah, I got a ball game. There we go. I'm going, I'll tell you my four. Five. I'm going JT Thor. JT Thor at the four. Okay. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going JT Thor at the four. Okay, okay, solid, solid. My four, my four is going to be. This is stressful. <laughs> Who my power four are going to be, man? It's too many options, bro. Who's my, somebody, somebody's going to be mad. But I'm going, uh, damn. Yeah, it's a tough team. Who is my four? Who is my four going to be? I really got to think about this, bro. I know I'm going to wash this back. I'm sick. Um, I'm gonna I'm just go, uh, bro. All time is tough because it's, it's, I'm gonna go Jeremy Grant at my four, man. He's in the league right now, you know what I'm saying? Olympic gold medalist. I'm gonna go Jeremy Grant at the four, yeah. Okay, 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 never mind. I'm and then I'm, I'm just playing Boozer at the five. We're small balling, but we got Boozer at the five, okay. I mean, okay. that's my that's my initial starting five. You understand why I put those guys out there? We're just out there to. Man, we're trying to we're trying to score for sure, but we're really to play defense. We want a low pace game. We want to slow you down. We want to get Boozer his touches, and we want to get you know what I mean guys that. But my 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 backups, my 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 Jamal Crawford, 
Is Jalil Abdul Bassett coming off? Oh, call him from Seattle. Hold on, he's from Seattle. No, 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 no. I'm saying he, he my six man. Oh, okay, he, okay. He's not coming off. So he's only six man because he 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 just got to get jiggy. He need his space. Okay, can't what's have Marshall. What's his name? Jalil Abdul Bassett. Okay, my guy. He went to Oregon. He he was just over in China right now recently. Um, yeah, the dude is the dude is a crazy crazy bag. His bag is like he just the kid is the kid is really like that and um. Yeah, he's coming off my number six. My number seven is uh Tom Feeney from 2010. Stupid. He was one, you know, he was top, he was top 10 point guards in the in the, in the nation. Jalil, I mean, no, then I got Devin from FSU. He, he, you know what I mean? But I'm taking him, I'm taking him like two, three years ago. I, he just had a couple kids, so I'm taking him a couple years Devin ago. Devin who? Devin Booker. Oh, wait, hold on, wait. Hold on. Not Devin, not not Devin Booker. Which which not D Book. From the Suns. Nah, this is the book. Nah, this ain't the book. This ain't the book, of course, but this is my D book. I don't know okay. the other D book. Oh, all right, all right. This, <laughs> this is black and Dominican D book. You know what I mean? There my boy go. Dominican. He's a problem with FSU. So, yeah, he's a problem. You know, I got some honorable mention. Got Dacian on that team. If my TBT team right here, I mean, Carlos and them is out. So I wouldn't even, if we was going current players, I'd take Carlos Boozer and trade and they them out. But Trajan, the, he the general manager of the Pelicans right now. So, you know what I mean? I just got to shout him out just for, you know, hey, buddy, all that. Facts, tap in, tap in. Yeah. I got to I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, uh, land my five, man. Who's my yeah, Y'all won, bro. Y'all got Kevin Durant, but that shit is cheating. But this is a bad game. You got KB <laughs> hey, on the team. And it's the DMV, listen, the DMV, hey, are you talking just Maryland? Or are you talking? I'm talking about just the metropolitan area. So, for listeners, we don't count Baltimore. So, that's why I say Melo. Because the Baltimore is not the DMV, and I'm not counting like Southern Virginia, like Richmond, Newport News. So I'm not counting like AI, none of that. You just you just counting the guys that really bang the DMV. Only the so DMV is the metro area. Like if you're if the metro go to your city, you part of the DMV. We got a metro line that go through like that's, this. That's kind of I can't believe Kevin Durant from over there. He should not hey, be bro. playing with them boys. PG County, bro. PG County. I don't. Who's my center? Though? Hey, listen. That time I was in. That time I was in JUCO. I met a girl from PG County, boy. Uh, uh, <laughs> mm, that's solid. Who's my? I got. I got name my five though. I got. I got name my center. People going. I got five men. How y'all got five men? I, we we got to. We gotta have a center. Who's my center though? That's Who's crazy. in the league right now? From uh, damn. Uh, I'm gonna go um. He from DMV? I think from here. Damn, who's my center, bro? Hold up, hold up. I think he's from here. Not from here. Damn. We don't have to check birth certificates. <laughs> now, my, my 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 first four is for sure DMV. But I don't, who's my center though? Damn. I'm blanking right now. Uh wow. I'm gonna have to just. I'm gonna have to just move KD to the five, and I'm gonna put Monty Williams at the four. <laughs> yeah, guard. Hey, Boozer is giving KD that work. And he is, he is. But KD getting it right back though, so we good. We good. We getting it right back on the other end. Oh, sorry, KD. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be sick. Cause I'm gonna have to go Google centers came from DMV. I'm, I'm gonna really be be beefing. But oh man, uh, this is this has been a lot of fun, man. Um, last question we always ask all our guests, man. Who is one person that we should have on the What's in Your Bag podcast? Um, and whoever you say, you got to help us get him on, man. You got to give us the assist, man, and help us help 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 us get him on the show. Who should we get? Oh, that guy's impossible to get. Okay. Um. 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 Who wants to know who's deep in their bag? Uh, I'm down. I'm down with. Uh, I don't even really know too many. I know a lot of guys. Who's cold? Who's in their bag though? Like. Who can I help get in their bag? That's the million dollar question. I don't know how they're gonna step on this on this mic after I done did it, but uh, <laughs> you know, um, I, you can already get to it, Tony. I already know that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Tony Douglas, he plays at Benfica right now. Mm, that'd be dope. I know he was in the league for a while too. Yep, that'd be dope. That'd be real dope. That'd be real dope. <laughs> Say less, man. We're gonna be we're gonna be tapped in trying to get that. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna shoot him this, put him in this, put this X or yeah, put that clip there. Yeah, I sent it. Yep, that's it. Fact, yeah, fact. no more, man. So uh I would like to end off every episode, man, just just giving flowers, man. Like I said, 
um, a bunch of times on this episode, man. It's been super inspiring just to be able to hear your journey, man, and be able to hear what you've been able to persevere through throughout your career, man. Just thing to put on for Alaska, man. I always appreciate how you wear that on your sleeve, man. And, you know, like I said, me, people for myself, man, we from DMV, super, super powerful, man. So I always respect people who wear their upbringing and, and, and their roots on their sleeve like yourself, man, to be able to put, put on, man. And it's been an honor to be able to just watch your journey, man, see where you've been able to go. Um, I'm going to continue to watch your journey, man, unfold in Spain. Yeah. We're definitely going to be rooting for you, man. Continue to hit next levels, man. We're definitely going to be, um, you know, be following along. I already know that this is just the beginning, you know, of, of that story, man. So we got to run this back, man, when you, you know, Euro League and you can sure. level it up, man, and, and see what's changed in the next couple of years, man. Let's but, take it there. Let's take it there. I'm all I'm all about it, all for it, man. Let's get thanks, it. Thanks again for coming on, man. Appreciate we, you having me. I appreciate you having me, bro. No doubt. No doubt, man. We're going to, like I said, I know for all the viewers, man, if y'all still listening right now, man, make sure you guys subscribe to the podcast. Give us a thumbs up, man. It goes a long way. Tell a friend to tell a friend. This has been another episode of the What's In Your Bag podcast presented by Bet Bet Online. Till next time, folks. Peace. Suave. Suave. I've been in my bag for a while, I'm invincible Story of a young boss, grinding shit critical Calling on my bros one time, cause you special I had some hood dreams of right rounds for my mentor Every target that I shoot is on point like a pencil Different route, change relationships, I'm so sorry Came up from the trenches and I made it, I say hardly now